starting okay, to come in. Okay, we're going to play the piano and we're going to play our own piano, but three minutes of music. Let's just play the all, the full piano, okay? Okay, we are going live right now. Okay, great. And this is with the music or me? I can play the music one second. Play the music. Let me know. When I My name is Viriana Tkach and I direct the Yara Arts Group from La Mama Experimental Theater in Ukrainian East Village in New York. Today Yara is happy to be presenting this virtual event with the Ukrainian Educational and Cultural Center in Jenkinstown, Pennsylvania. We'll start our series, Yara's traditional music series, with the folk fiddler Pavlo Huminyuk, who was known in his time in in the 1920s and 30s as the king of Ukrainian music in America. What you, you heard at the very top of this uh, program is one of his first recordings, Aya Toto Ducha Lublu, I Love That Girl, from 1925. Today, you're gonna hear samples of Ahumyuk's original recordings, and I'll talk about the first Ukrainian immigrants to the US. Then we'll um, talk about with uh, folklorist Irena Avaloshina about Huminyuk's recordings and rituals. And then we will feature the U.S. Orchestra from Kiev, who are inspired by his recordings today. Dobry den, ja Virlana Tkacz, hudojni kierownik Jary Mesteczkoj Grupy w ukraińskiej dzielnicy w New Yorku. Siodnie poczułem zapisy Paula Huminyuka z 20 roków z New Yorku. Tapo. Поговорим трошки про нашу першу еміграцію тут, а далі про його записи Віхілля, Христин з фольклористом Іриною Волиц. І послухаємо УС Орхестру з Києва, який грає репертуар Гуменюка. If you would like a program for tonight with the list of music played, uh, you can get it uh, at our website, and we also have everybody's bios in it. Uh, and our website is www.yarraartsgroup.net. Uh, um, our event is bilingual, so everybody will be speaking their own language, and we'll try to summarize things in translation. Наш вечір двомовний, і ми маємо програмку, але на жаль, тільки по англійській, але там зазначені всі пісні, що ми граємо. Це можна на нашій вебсайті знайти, yaraartsgroup.net. У нас все є маленький такий ритуал, 
де ми починаємо кожну програму. We have a little ritual which we start each of our Yara programs. So welcome to Yara Arts Group, dedicated to theater and all the poetry, music, and images that inspire it. Today, Yara is not at La Mama, but in a virtual space with you. So, the time. And now we'll hear uh, the, another Kolomeika from Humanyuk. <laughs> Paolo Hominyuk was born in 1883 in the town of Pidvolochinsk. It's uh, in the Ternopil region of Ukraine, Western Ukraine, uh, which was then um, part of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. And he emigrated sometime before 1908, becoming part of the, that first big immigration of Ukrainians uh, from what is now Ukraine to America. About 500,000 people came in this first wave, somewhere between 1870s and the beginning of World War I. They all came by boat, and they were usually uh, villagers from Western Ukraine. They called themselves Rusine, or even Nashi Lude, and were labeled by the authorities as Russian, Polish, Slovak, Austro-Hungarian, and sometimes Ukrainian. They are brought to work in, uh, mostly in Western Pennsylvania, in the coal mines. And it was extremely hard work. It was done by, mostly by young men and boys. And uh, that's who emigrated. Um, they would live in, the Ukrainians would often live in boarding houses and to protect themselves financially from exploitation by the company, uh, that owned all the food establishments, they would move into these boarding houses run by women, often widows of somebody in, in their own in-group, and she would cook and clean and even wash their backs, as you could see. Um, and on weekends, they would pool their uh, finances and buy some beer and liquor and have home parties instead of going to really expensive saloons. Uh, and because of that, the Ukrainians were able to send money home and often visit too. They also had cultural aspirations. For instance, already by 1896, um, they organized a very large Shuchenko celebration in Shemokin, Pennsylvania. And here we can see a picture of that. They also formed musical groups. This one, as you can see, is called the Ruska Banda, Ruthenian. Uh, not Russian, uh, because they're uh, from a Greek Catholic church, actually, and they're Greek Catholics from the Carpathians. Uh, one of the ambitious young men who came um, to Western Pennsylvania was uh, Miron Surmach, who writes beautifully about all of this in his book. And here he came in uh, 1910, and he describes his life, but he wanted to get out of the mines as quickly as possible. He wanted to become a knehar, a bookseller. And once he made enough to get out of Pennsylvania, he came to New York where he met other young ambitious Ukrainians. 
and they organized a gymnastic club called Heat. And here's a picture of one of their first big heat gatherings. Uh, Surmanch sets up a bookstore on 7th Street. He calls the Sheech Bazaar. And uh, it's right across the church from the old St. George's, and uh, which was one of the um, Ukrainian Greek Catholic churches. Um, and it had bought this property from the German community, which was mo moving out at that time out of the East Village. Um, so the area around 7th Street started becoming Ukrainian. And here is the what the choir looked like at St. George's in 1915. So it's an amazing amount of people uh, who are involved in this project. If you've been to Ukrainian East Village, you'll recognize this, this building. It's on the corner of 7th and 3rd Avenue. And as you can see, it was originally built as a bank but it's now the Ukrainian Protestant um, place of worship. Uh, here you can see that same building in the right corner. Uh, and this is a postcard from 1905 of Cooper Square where you, um, and the area. And we see it's sort of in this transition of becoming a modern, very uh, urbanized center. Uh, there were still horses, like for instance, here's the fire brigade from that time. But already a lot of places are, uh, we have the elevated, which is uh, 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 the trains the, the that were here before the subways was really um, all connected. And so you have this mix of, of the horse drawn and the electric powered or the steam powered uh, transportation. Here's a view from the street of St. Mark's, street level at St. Mark's, looking at the East Village. And here's one of 14th Street and 3rd Avenue, which is still part of the neighborhood. Um, and here is a wonderful photograph of the big music store in the neighborhood, Carl Fisher's, Fisher, which was there until just very recently. And they sold cheap music and instruments, and they were right on, the, on Cooper Square also. And Humanyu came in 1908, uh, sometime before 1908. And here by 1909, he's part of the, um, an early Ukrainian orchestra. You can see him in the, uh, in the bottom left. He's holding the violin. He was uh, known as the best fiddler for weddings, family ce celebrations among the Ukrainian uh, immigrants, and not only, but among the Slavic population as a whole. Um, he also not only played these instruments, he repaired and made violins. And he had a store on 2nd Street with his brother, John. Uh, Humanyuk became friends with Surmach in the 20s. He writes about this. And um, the store sold not only books, but also sheet music and also records. And it was a place where like all the Ukrainians met, really. As Surmach tells the story, one day in 1925, a representative of OK Records comes in and he, as he's talking to Humanyuk, and he introduces him. OK Records was started by Otto Hyman, a, a German American who was, record, who was the first to start recording local Germans and local Czechs and Poles, Poles and Swedes to sell the records to the local community. Um, Surmach introduced him and as, as the best Ukrainian fiddler and OK signed him. And a few weeks later, he was already producing one of his uh, first recordings. And they were um, acoustical recordings at that point. Uh, the, the musician would play into this giant horn and it was actually the real of vibrations of the instrument that were recording, uh, uh, that was vibrating the stylus that was then recording the master disc. Um, 1925 was really the end of acoustical recordings and the first two recordings you heard were actually acoustical recordings uh, because right at that time, uh, electrical microphones and amplification came into use general use in the recording industry. And here's some of the early mics. 
and already the next recordings um, Humanu does are already on amplified mics. The records are still very hissy, and let's listen to this one before it was cleaned up. This is what people would actually hear them like originally. <laughs> Over 250 recordings, uh, people say, of Humanyuk, and most of them are for, for Columbia Records, uh, which acquired OK Label pretty soon uh, in 1926. And af after the First World War, we have a second immigration uh, of Ukrainians coming to the US. And they're, as you can see even from these pictures, they're more urban, more educated, and uh, often come in, people who were involved in the various struggles to create an independent Ukraine um, right after World War I, most of which failed. Uh, they, these people came with an, uh, to promote their ideas here and to promote their causes and had a very different view of culture than the original first immigration. Uh, for instance, the cautious choir, which we see a picture here, uh, sang Ukrainian songs, but they did not sing them um, in uh, like the villagers did in the village. Rather, they sang them in arrangements, wonderful arrangements like Lewontovich's, but they had this idea of refining the, um, the rural culture. Um, they also brought with them a lot of political ideas and Soon you had demonstrations like these ladies demonstrating in front of the White House in 1922. Um, the immigration also included really some of the great giants of modernism, of international modernism, such as the sculptor um, Archipenko, who came in 1923 from Ukraine um, with his wife uh, and others such as Burluk, uh, the painter uh, who would then become part of American um, uh, artistic scene. Humanyuk's first recording are truly world-class village fiddling. And one of my favorites is uh, called Tanich Pidverbame, Dance Under the Willow. Although um, this group of girls, 
from Shimokin and Pennsylvania um, with their tridents on their heads uh, are appearing in this um, skit called Our Loyalty to Ukraine. They already have a very different vision of Ukraine than the first um, uh, folk uh, immigrants. These are the children. Uh, the younger, uh, the even younger girls in this group are presenting a skit called God Bless America. And after 1924, there is this great pressure to sort of become American. And uh, immigration is closed in 1924 to most people. And by the 30s, we have the Great Depression, where there is um, really significant poverty. In, in America, especially in the Bowery and the East Village. Uh, and then there is a lot of sort of pressure to become part of that melting pot of America. Uh, Pablo Jumeño's last recordings are from the 40s, uh, it's, it's 1940, and it's, of course, America is re getting ready to enter into the war. And there's a very different view of ethnic music at that point. Uh, his legacy will be preserved, of course, by uh, Amir Surmatch, or Old Man Surmatch, as everybody used to call him, who continued to have a store on 7th Street and in 2016 sold me some of the music you heard today. Um, he, uh, Surma, unfortunately closed then, but it was one of the great preservers of knowledge about the very first immigrations of Ukrainians in America. Um, and I think what I'd like, oh, and here's a great postcard they printed um, of Ukraine, their view of a beautiful Ukrainian girl. And this is from the beginning of the 20th century. I'd like to now introduce Irina Voloshina, um, who is a folklorist who works with Yara Arts Group. And, um, and she will talk now about some of the music you've heard. Thank you, Juliana. Uh, yes, I'm a folklorist uh, from Ukraine and I currently live in the United States. Uh, my research interests include the folkloric practices of uh, Ukrainian immigrants in, in America and their uh, development here. I was fascinated by the ritual pieces uh, Humanyuk recorded, especially the blessings, short dialogues, and uh, s uh, snippets of humorous conversations between the music. Uh, Humanyuk was best known for his Ukrainian wedding series, recorded from 1926 to 1927, and uh, is said to have sold over 100,000 copies. It includes most, uh, the most important parts of the wedding, from engagement, Zaruchene, to a garland, weaving celebration, Vinkopletene, uh, the wedding celebration itself, Vesilia, um, the wedding after party, Popravene, and even the christening of the, ch of the child, Christene, uh, as a logical outcome of the wedding. According to Victor Green's book, A Passion of Polka, All-Time Ethnic Music in America, Eugene Zhukovsky and Rosa Krasnovska, who also appear on the recording, were popular comedians and entertainers. Um, they uh, were invited by Maron Surmach, and they appear on, on many Humanyuk recordings. Uh, now I would like um, to play the piece from the Ruchine part. One second. Ola, ot tu bi zaručene bez muzeke. Se mene što te skidaš tu i muzeke. Oj, idut klop, sjuda, sjuda, dolajte, I'm 
records do not include such side conversation, and this is an excellent example of them. Uh, also, I would like to play a part from the wedding recording, Ukrainske Vesilia. And here we will hear Vinshuvanya blessing from mother and from father, and Mnoha Elita wishes of many happy years of life. we have a dialogue and argument between a husband and a wife about a child's name. The father insists on Ivan in honor of his own father. The mother reminds her husband that he promised that she could name the baby if it's a boy. She wants to call him Hrits. Let's listen to this one. <laughs> Ідіть, куме, ідіть і кажіть, що похрестили його Іваном. У мій пан понадолося Іван, і син мій має бути Іван. От тобі чоловік, говорив, як буде перший син, скільки як я схочу так ще буде називати. А тепер та щось стало, що чоловікове Іван та Іван, а гіна такого чоловіка. Коли кричи, він коли кричи, добре, що кумови поїхали, а ми тут досі не зараз на костру потали його жарту. These little intimate dialogues bring to life the rituals and allow the former village life to come alive in the hearts and minds of the immigrants, now living in a big, faraway city. Kulmanyuk's recordings uh, created such real pictures of their village homeless in Ukraine, united people, and helped them start identifying themselves as Ukrainian. Now, uh, I would like to introduce our guest from Kyiv, U.S. Orchestra, uh, that plays the music of Ukrainian immigrants to America. The U.S. in, in their name stands, uh, stands for Ukraine, Ukrainska Tilska Orchestra, Ukrainian Village Orchestra, which was the name of one of the Humanyuk bands. So, Andriy, Yarena, Sergei, welcome. Dobry wieczór. Dobry wieczór. Dobry wieczór. Dobry wieczór. Um, Rozkazuj, proszę, jak wy się jak, jak gór. How did you start as a band? Naprawdę, my do tego, jak utworzyły się jak gór, my mamy pewny swój досвід в музиці народній, в вивченні її. Їздили трошки в експедиції, грали в різних гуртах, але так сталося, що от ми вирішили, ну, зійшлися і вирішили спробувати грати саме музику іммігрантів. І, власне, ця музика іммігрантів нам, ну, якби створила наш гурт, який ми і назвали 
як і колись в еміграції називали ці капели, українська сільська оркестра. So you were musicians before you came together and the music of Ukrainian immigrants united you, yes? Okay, so um, what are we going to hear now? Що ви нам заграєте зараз? Ну, зараз ми хочемо заграти такий, а я собі козак лепкий. Це все, власне, в такому вигляді в інструментах, які раніше були. І на таких інструментах, власне, на скрипках і на басолі емігранти грали. На початках особливо. Okay, so these are the traditional instruments that the Ukrainian immigrant musicians played with. <laughs> How did you become interested in Humanyuk's music? We were interested in Humanyuk because of the fact that from all the musicians who were there, who were playing and were recorded in the immigration, he was very close to his technique and was different from the music of Kiev. They didn't even call him the Lord of the Scripts. Дуже цікава в нього манера, саме виконання, що це дуже цікаво для мене, як і для скрипальки, це, зокрема, дуже цікаво. І тим паче про нього була відома інформація, що він народився під Волочиську, в Тернопільській області. І ми навіть туди її з'їздили в експедицію, ми їздили на Західну Україну і завітали туди, в це містечко, це районний центр. Але, на жаль, у нас була велика надія, що хтось про нього там щось може нам розповісти. На жаль, вже там його ніхто не знає. So, very few people know about him in Ukraine, even in his hometown, Pidvolochysk, but you really like his music, and there is the reason why he is called the king of, of Ukrainian folk music in the immigration. Okay, um, are you going to play anything for us now? Zagrajte nam just? Так, ми зараз хочемо заграти такий танець, який теж з його репертуару, називається «Полька Мазурка». Thank you. 
Thank you so much. Actually, uh, later in his life, uh, Pavlo Humaniuk started recording Polish folk tunes. And uh, no wonder, because his home town, Pidvolochesk, in different times was under a Poland or Austro Hungarian Empire. And uh, Polish American folk music became and still is extremely uh, popular in the United States. And uh, there is an evidence that he collaborated with uh, Polish folk musicians and played a kanarek in at the very beginning of, of this movement. Що ще ми сьогодні від вас почуємо? Ми хочемо зараз заграти ще одну таку дуже цікаву річ, вона називається Золонівська гречка. Так само хочемо сказати, що репортар взагалі українських емігрантів дуже такий потужний з того огляду, що це фактично перші танцювальні інструментальні записи такої правдивої української музики. І от є навіть такі випадки, коли ми знаємо, що існували якісь станції, ми знаходимо їхні описи і згадки про них у дослідників, фольклористів, але самих записів немає. От, а в емігрантів е, є саме аудіозаписи, і є такий прекрасний приклад е, того, як звучав е, цей танець. І от е, то, той танець, про який я сказав, е, Зеленівська гречка, його згадує у своїх е, дослідженнях Леся Українка. От, е, вона пише, що у нас був такий танець гречка, там хлопці, дівчата його танцювали, і потім нам вдалося знайти в одному навіть листуванні, де вона згадує, коли вона була в Софії, в Болгарії, вона побачила дітей в школі, які танцювали якийсь їхній традиційний болгарський танець. І вона якраз там і згадує, що це щось дуже подібне на наш танець гречка, як його у нас танцюють у полі. От. І тому ми, на жаль, поки не знаємо, як направду танцювався цей танець. Але ми добре знаємо від емігрантів, як цей танець грали, як він звучав, і от хочемо якраз його заграти. Yeah, so some of the dancers and some of the music is forgotten in, in Ukraine and the descriptions of, of this music and dances are, is, is found in, um, in the, um, letters in, in the books of the folklorists like Lesya Ukrainka, but uh, the, And, and this is what you're going to play now is an example of such forgotten tune, but it was preserved in the immigration. So please. <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay. Thank you. What, wonderful. Yes, the diaspora certainly preserves and hopefully documents and innovates. Yeah, and uh, to everybody who is watching us now, uh, if you have any old time photos of Ukrainian immigrants in America in your family albums or stories that, would you, that you would like to share of special occasions, rituals, or celebrations, please get in touch with us via email yarasgroup at gmail.com. Okay, so let's hear it. First of all, for U.S. Orchestra, Andriy Levchenko, Yarina Droin, and Serhi Postol. Take a bow, guys. Duja harno, duja vam dyakujem. And a big hand to the people who really helped me put together this program, folklorist Irina Voloshina, and and our uh, visual designer, Valdemar Klushko from Kiev, and um, Darian Fiorino, who's running our tech tonight. Um, thank you also to our sponsors. We couldn't do it without you. Um, and it's first of all, the Ukrainian Community Foundation of Philadelphia. Uh, we were supposed to do these kind of events live in, at the Ukrainian Center and Jenkinstown. And uh, thank you for letting them, uh, for, uh, for allowing us to switch to virtual events. Uh, also, the Ukraine Self Reliance FCU and public funds from New York State Council on the Arts, as well as all the friends of Yara who help us out. We really rely on your support. Like we said, there is a program on our website, and um, your friends can listen to this recording after this event, and there are links on the website uh, to where you can hear it. Uh, you can hear many, many human uh, recordings on the internet, on Spotify, or wherever you get your music. At, as far as the U.S. Orchestra goes, they have two, piece, uh, two albums out on YouTube that you can listen to, and they also have a website where you can hear samples. Um, I'm Yolanda Tkach, and thank you all and have a good night. We're gonna sign off with another great Pavlo Homonyuk tune.